Hey everybody, this is Birch. Uh, as you know, Batman is uh, pretty much all of DC at the moment, uh, but but he's a popular character. I mean, in fairness, Batman is probably the most recognizable superhero character, po with the possible exception of Spider-Man. I think the two of them battle it out for kind of worldwide recognition. Superman's up there, you know, Wonder Woman, sure, you know, and then you get into some of the Captain America and, and, and others, but I mean, Spider-Man's the guy for Marvel, and I think Batman's clearly the guy for DC. Um, but could somebody overtake these characters? Could somebody overtake Batman, for example? Well, one of our viewers uh, is curious if that could be the case. So we have, uh, hey, Perch, I've been watching your channel, Comics with Perch, uh, for a while, and I truly recommend it for anyone wondering about uh, where comics are at today. I'm sorry about that. All the people who have been uh, this, you've, if you were recommended this channel, I do apologize, uh, but I do my best. I, I promise. Uh, well, no, I, I, you know, that's, not even, that's a lie. I don't do my best. But I do something. That's that's what I do. I do every day. I get on here and I record something, and then I put it out into the world and you listen to it. That's uh, that's what we got. Um, by the way, I do like how uh, in Texas. I've, I recently moved to Texas, and so I'm learning all kinds of things. One of the things I've learned is that speed limits are a vague suggestion here in Texas, which is nice. Um, I've got this car up to 150, uh, earlier today. It felt pretty good. Uh, but you know, then I started thinking in my head about the potholes I'm also experiencing all over Texas and, and thinking uh, that you could, you could literally listen to me. Die. Well, you wouldn't because if I crashed and died, the video would never get uploaded. So I guess, uh, all right. Anyway, back to, uh, back to the mail that, that went down a dark path. Anyway, anyway, uh, I have been into the 1960s American comic book superhero Vampirella since 2014. And while it is sure safe to refer to her as being like a female version of Batman because of her whole being a lovable uh, costume dark adventure with a tragic past, I don't know, do people call Vampirella a female Batman? I don't know. I haven't heard that one before, uh, to be honest, but um, interesting, okay? Um, it seems like she has a lot going on for her in terms of interesting sounding titles the readers can choose from, thanks to publisher Dynamite Entertainment. Uh, while DC Comics, publisher of Batman Comics, is in a bad place itself in the sense that it can no longer publish anything that will have me think, I want to read this, not even the ones that star or co-star Batman. Nick Berducci, did you write this mail? You gotta, you gotta come clean here. Uh, did you write this mail? The uh, thanks to publisher Dynamite Entertainment was what gave you away. Here, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. That's, uh, that's fine. It's nice to talk about something that's not Marvel or DC. Um, so, I mean, so far, back to the mail, I mean, so far there's already launched Vampirilla Strikes, the upcoming Vampirilla Year One, premiering on July 27th, 2002, 2022, sorry, 2022 Strange, or Savage Tales, coming July 6th, to, okay, you are Nick Berducci, no, no, you're not, you're not, uh, okay, um, and the upcoming one-shot Vampirilla Fairy Tales coming out in August, and of course, the upcoming five-part miniseries Vampirilla Mind Warp, launching in September, which may mark the first appearance of the original Vampirella universe launching in September in a long time. Nothing against Batman, but it seems like his days of having a new comic series one-shots that many, including myself, are excited for are over. My question is, does Vampirella have the advantage of replacing Batman as America's top-selling costume dark superhero type comic book protagonist? All right. Um, I'm still, I'm, I look, I'm, I've got to look at the email here. I'm still, I'm suspicious, uh, I'm just a little suspicious. That's all I'm saying. Just, just, just hear me out. Just a little. That the, you, I, you know. But uh, I definitely think if um, if you, <laughs> I definitely think if you're not on Nick Nick's payroll, you should be. Uh, but anyway, okay. Um, boy, uh, Vampirilla. No, I don't think Vampirilla overtakes Batman. Um, I, I think so. Taking the question very seriously, the, the challenge that Vampirilla has is that um, as a, a character, um, it's, it's going to be hard for kind of, you know, it's going to be hard for parents to get really into, um, you know, getting their kids into Vampirella in the same way that they might get their kids into Batman. I mean, Barnes & Noble does Batman Day, and they have a little Batman mask that they give out to kids and parents, you know, dad comes in, it's like, I liked Batman when I was a kid, and I wonder what he's up to now. And then he opens the comics like, what the hell is this? He's crying over a wedding he didn't have with Catwoman. What? 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 Ah, stick to Dark Knight. 
he, he, he died. He, he got old and looked like he was about to die in that one. So that's where it ended for me. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm just kidding. Um, but anyway, I, I think that, you know, Batman has this uh, long kind of history to the character that, you know, a, a lot of, uh, you know, casual non-comic readers can grab onto. And that's what's going to keep the character's popularity higher. Um, we haven't really gotten a, uh, well, I mean, there, there's not a, a modern big budget Vampirella movie. I mean, they've been trying to stuff Emma Watson in that thing for years and it's just not happening. She's just not into it. And I don't know why. I mean, uh, well, I mean, it, it, the costume would probably look a little awkward on her, but, but anyway, but I, regard, okay. But anyway, I, I think that there's a lot of things that have to happen outside of comics before Vampirella could actually overtake the popularity of Batman. Um, I, and, and also, and I don't think this is necessarily fair, uh, but a lot of comic shops, the retailers get weird about Vampirilla, uh, where like carrying her, it's like, they think that they're carrying, uh, I, I mean, and this was always strange years and years ago, back when, you know, all, you know, Marvel and DC's characters were running around in, in spandex outfits and, you know, I, with their, with their boobs out and Vampirilla's is just a little bit more obvious, uh, but still, retailers would often treat Vampirella like it was like softcore porn, and they would put it behind the counter. You know, even though there was, uh, there's actually nothing in there that you know was actual porn. I mean, no, nothing, nothing that went more uh, extreme than you know. I, I mean, hell, Black Label I think has done more. That showed a bat dick at one point. You know, we haven't seen a Vampirella dick, uh, but we've seen a bat dick. So I mean, I, I don't. I think it's unfair. Is what I'm saying. Um, but but anyway, I, I think. Um, you know, I, I'm glad that you like Vampirilla. Um, God, I don't. I, I'm you, you. Your mail befuddled me. I, it was the it was the exact uh, it was the precision on the dates that did it. That uh, just, I mean, it, it's Vampirilla fan. I, I think okay. So if if Vampirilla was to go more mainstream, I think first of all you need a movie out there. If you had that, that would be helpful. I think a, a movie to that that wasn't. Um, you know, wasn't a, a B, you know, don't, don't do an Ed Wood style Vampirilla movie, do something that's big budget, you know, takes it seriously, puts a, a big name actress into it. Um, you know, big name, big actress into it. If you catch my drift, uh, but you know, do that. And then I think, um, you know, you, you write it. I mean, if you, if you look at actually the success that dynamite's having right now with the boys and the fact that Amazon prime has this series out, and it's uh, it's doing good crossover business for the comics. And by the way, if you haven't done it yet, you know the uh, a humble bum, humble bundle that Dynamite has put out uh, benefiting Ukraine is a really solid deal. Uh, get in there. You not only get a lot of comics, get your get your money to some refugees in Ukraine. That's good. It's a good system. When I mentioned that before, by the way, in another video, uh, people came in to, to bitch about that, and several people were like were bright, like I downloaded this video because screw Ukraine. But look, if your issue with Ukraine is that the government's sending money to them, then what, what the hell is wrong with if, if it's private charity donation? Isn't that what you're asking for? Anyway, I, I mean, you don't have to buy it, but it's a hell of a good deal. Humble bundle, Dynamite's putting out, uh, gets the, you know, the boys and stuff. I think Vampirilla is in there too, actually. So there you go. You could get both. But if Amazon Prime, for example, did a Vampirella series or Netflix did or something like that, I think that would be a big trigger. And then I think... One thing I will say that I think Nick does a good job over at Dynamite with is he is more plugged into um, if something is successful, he doesn't uh, sit on his ass and let the comics go out of print and, and then get uh, get stupid with it. He actually, you know, seizes on the moment, tries to make money. Um, you see him doing that right now with uh, with the boys and keeping things in print and making sure that the titles are out there. Um, I think if, if something happened to Vampirilla, I think he'd snap into gear and, and get a lot of that stuff going. But Vampirilla kind of has to escape the uh, stigma of being a um, kind of, you know, soft core porn. It has to, it's not that. It, it isn't. If you've read the comic, it's definitely not that. It's had some good, well thought out stories. The, the priest version of Vampirilla I thought was really, really good. Uh, but that's, that's kind of, they, they see it and they're like, oh, this is like uh, Spencer Gift's uh, superhero. You know, was because of the costume. And again, it, it's unfair, but that's that's the way people view it. I I, I think people should pick up Vampirilla. It's a good, solid, good title. Uh, shared Vampirilla universe. Why not? Uh, but how about any of you? Are any of you uh, who are who's not Nick uh, reading Vampirilla? 
what would you recommend? Do you think, is there a chance, can Vampirella overtake Batman? Uh, or is, uh, it, it can't overtake, it just, just, no, it's, it's got billions and billions of dollars and a ton of time to make up to, to overtake Batman. But I'm telling you, if you put, God, I was going to say, uh, I was going to, you know, dip into that, uh, you know, Brazier's encyclopedia in my brain, but uh, I was going to go like, if you put Riley Reed into that costume, it's like, nah, it wouldn't work. That would not work. You got to do, uh, you got to go somewhere else. But uh, I mean, hell, I, she could give it a try. I, I mean, I would, I would still pay to watch it. I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm putting that out there. Uh, but anyway, you got to, that's not going to, that's not going to help with the stigma of softcore porn, what I'm saying right now. Anyway. All right. All right. All right. Enough of that. If you're a Vampirilla fan, a fan, let us know in the comments below. Um, you know, uh, speak loud, speak big. I shouldn't say it that way. Uh, anyway, thank you very much for the mail. Vampirilla overtaking Batman. I mean, why not? It'd be fun. You know, then we could get the Vampirilla family uh, and all those books. And then, uh, you know, I, no, no, we don't need any of that. Anyway, thank you very much for listening.